Welcome to Bold Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Arduino IDE to program an ESP32 microcontroller in order to control a stepper motor. Stepper motors are extremely useful because they make very precisely controlled movements. If you have a 3D printer, laser cutter, CNC machine, well, at least a hobby size one, you probably have a machine that has stepper motors in it. That's because they can make very precisely controlled steps or movements and also have a good amount of torque for their size. They're inexpensive, which is also a great feature. Compared to a more expensive servo motor, it's definitely not going to be quite as precise, but at the same time, it's going to be much cheaper and very easy to use. Without getting into too much detail, stepper motors pulse or step their way around making a full revolution in a certain number of steps. For some motors that might be two or 300 steps and it can get up to over 2000 steps to make just one revolution. When you think about how many precise movements that is to complete 360 degrees, it lets you know why you have great control. The typical hobby servo motors that are inexpensive, not like the professional grade servo motors I mentioned earlier, they're a great tool for precise control, except that they're usually limited to about one degree movements. Anything finer than that is not going to result in a very good action, and they can be a little bit jerky as they move along. Stepper motors, while you would think those individual steps are quite jerky, because those steps are so small, it's a very fluid and smooth movement, and you won't ever notice those kind of steps yourself. If you've used a 3D printer or a CNC machine that's powered with stepper motors, you'll see no evidence of these little lines, at least until you get to the microscopic level. With those features in mind, it can be very useful to use stepper motors in all sorts of electronics projects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use an ESP32 microcontroller with a stepper motor, and of course, the driver board, which is an interface between the motor and the microcontroller. It accomplishes a few purposes, including handling the surges that come from inductive kicks when a motor is started and stopped. It's really quite simple. It even uses one of the built-in Arduino libraries. So without further ado, let's get into it. One of the easiest places to find stepper motors is just by heading over to Amazon and searching stepper motor in the search. Uh, as you'll see here, there are some larger NEMA style stepper motors, but those are bigger than what I'm going to show you here today. You simply need to find one of these hobby packs. And as you can see, the prices are really good. In Canadian dollars, you can get five of these motors with driver boards and a package of jumper wires for $18. And of course, free shipping with Amazon Prime. As I look through some of the screenshots here, as I look through some of the images that are on the listing. You can see here the driver board with four pins, which are the different inputs. And then you see a white connector for the actual motor to plug into. And then you see these four LEDs, which are gonna indicate when each pulse is being sent. It's a really handy way of doing it and helps to give you a visual when you're learning how to make this work. There's a bunch of other information online. Basically, all you need to know is that you need to assign four pins for the different inputs on the driver board, and you'll need to supply power in and ground. So you can use the 3.3 volt terminal or the VIN terminal VIN uh, for the VCC on the driver board, and of course, ground to ground. 3.3 volts is usually enough to power these small stepper motors, but some ESP32 boards, including the ones that I use, allow the USB connection to power the VIN pin at five volts instead of three. 3.3, which is really helpful. Some boards don't allow it at all, and your VIN pin will not have any voltage on it at all uh, because of diode blocking. If you want to maximize the torque on a given stepper, you'll want to add 5 volts to 12 volts instead, and so separately powering it with its own power supply is going to give you the best results when it comes to torque and speed for that motor. The beautiful part about stepper motors is that all of the libraries are already included with the default Arduino installation. And so all you need to do here is go to the examples and pull up one of the stepper examples. Here I'm gonna show one that is the one revolution sample script and it really just gives you one full revolution in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction. And it mentions there that you just need to define the pins for what you're going to use. Now, of course, this is not an Arduino, this is an ESP32. So I'm just gonna choose pins 18 
18, 19, 12, and 13 as the pins that I'm going to use, just like I showed on the pin out. Now, one thing to note here that's very important because it'll affect the performance of the motor is that you must actually put your inputs in a different order. They can't be one, two, three, four. They must actually be one, three, two, four, which means that as you go through and connect your wires, you usually do it sequentially. But here, after making my connections, I'm going to go and change it. So instead of 18, 19, 12, and 13, I'm going to go 18, 12. 12, 19, and 13, and then it'll be ready to go. You'll also need to adjust the speed here. The default 60 RPM, but I found these little steppers, or at least the one I chose out of a hobby kit, uh, didn't perform very well at that, so I'm gonna reduce it here. One thing I forgot to do at the top is to change the steps per revolution. Now the hobby steppers that I'm using uh, have a 2048 steps per full revolution. That's 32 steps for one motor revolution, and then a 64 to one ratio for torque, so a combination of 32 by 64 is 2048. With those changes made, you should be able to load the script to your ESP32 and watch it in action. This sample script, as I mentioned, should go one full revolution in each direction. And you can see this stepper from the hobby kit I'm using has a lot of movement in the shaft as it wobbles to and fro, but with a better quality or higher performance stepper, you will get nice uh, smooth movement. So let's take a look at what it takes to uh, tweak this script and make it do what you want it to do. The steps per revolution there, that's how far you're asking it to step. Because this sample script uses one full revolution, it's simply going to set the number of steps to your original default value of 2048. But you could put in other multiples here, or you could even just set any number of steps from one to one million, and it'll travel that many steps in that one function call. Of course, if you use multiples or fractions of 2048, you'll get multiples or fractions of revolution. For example, if you double it to 4096, then you'll get, I'm just going to comment out that original loop code and show you here what happens if we change it up a little bit and put our own step functions in. You can also add to my stepper dot set speed function call and you can set the speed to something different. Here I played around with 11 but then I realized why don't I make it go two full revolutions at 10 rpm, wait a second, and then go one full revolution at 5 rpm. Just for the sake of demonstration, this is how you do these. If you want it to go in the counterclockwise direction instead, you use negative, but I'm going to leave them positive in this case. So we see two full revolutions at a decent pace, that's 10 RPM, and then once it's completed those two full revolutions, it's going to wait for a second and then continue on at a much slower speed because we've set it at 5 RPM. When it's completed one full revolution, it's going to loop the script and start going again in that faster speed. That's really all it takes to make this stepper motor work. And of course, there's a lot of things you could do differently and incorporate in any other project. Set it to move a certain number of steps, move back, move forward, different speeds, whatever you would need for a more elaborate project. Of course, as I said, if you put a negative value instead, it'll move counterclockwise and positive values in the step function will cause it to move clockwise. That's all you need to know to get started. So as you can see with the couple of examples that we tried out, it's very easy to control these motors and to send them both forward and backwards in smooth increments. Unlike a servo motor, at least the hobby servo motors, you do get full 360 degree control. The motors themselves are very reliable and last a long time. They're also extremely cheap. I've even found listings on Amazon for about $20 that includes five motors and five driver boards as well. So just for a few dollars, you can find something that works great on a lot of your hobby projects. A lot of people would use a servo, but if you use one of these cheap stepper motors instead, a lot of times you'll find great torque characteristics and more precise control for even less money. As always, I hope that you use this simply as a building block to take it and incorporate it in a much bigger project with a lot more advanced characteristics. If you enjoy this type of content, please give the video a thumbs up, which lets me know what kind of content to keep making and subscribe to the channel as I post a new video every week and there's many things I'm sure you'll find are interesting. I'm closing in on a thousand subscribers and I'm very excited about that as it's just another milestone to hit along the way. But I have many more projects on the go, some really exciting bigger projects to tell you about and I can't wait to share those in the weeks to come. If you have a comment or suggestion, please leave it in the comments below or send me an email. My information is in the description below. Until next time, whether your projects go round and round or back and forth, don't be afraid to be bolder.